this week, New York Mayor Eric Adams announced that he had a plan in place with guidance to involuntarily commit individuals who are suffering from severe mental health issues on the streets of New York. Now, when we covered that story yesterday, I had some reservations and it turns out I was right. Now, what were my reservations? If you missed the clip, here they are. The backlash in a lot of ways is accurate because of the vagueness of what he's proposing here. The lack of resources that I'm noticing when it comes to treating mental health patients. And also just the factors necessary to determine whether or not someone should be involuntarily committed. These are questions that need very specific answers to. And unless he can provide those answers, this could be a disaster. The city said it would roll out training immediately to police officers. Okay, the NYPD has not been reformed in any way. A lot of the issues that we've had with the NYPD persist. So, okay, you're talking about training. What does that training entail? Because the idea of having the NYPD respond to people who are suffering from severe mental health issues is already a major red flag for me. So the NYPD was blindsided with the announcement that Eric Adams put out there recently. They were, they apparently had no idea this was going on. They, no one touched base with them on the training, which is concerning. So According to the New York Post, they spoke to some of the sources within the NYPD. Here's what we know. The NYPD was blindsided by, Merrick, by Mayor Eric Adams's announcement that cops will start taking homeless people into custody for psychiatric evaluations and potential hospital committal and scrambled Wednesday to start making it happen. The source also said that the city, that city hall sort of jumped the gun on this, adding not sure why they did it. One source even told the Post, quote, it's kind of a hot mess. Guys, remember, we're talking about involuntarily committing people. Okay, this has to do with people's freedom, bodily autonomy, civil liberties. You have to be super detail oriented, specific, and well resourced to do this right. And so far, none of that is in place. Let me continue. Another source said, like everything else, it gets dumped on our lap and we're expected to solve the problem without any guidance. But Adams claimed during his press conference announcing the directive that he plans to begin the trainings right away. And by the way, there's one other issue that I had, which was, of course, the resources. What were the resources? What, like what money was being allocated to this? And it turns out that there are issues here, including the lack of beds. I addressed that. Let's just quickly watch that video. Adams was asked, okay, well, do you have enough hospital beds for this? And he's like, oh, don't worry, Kathy Hochul, governor of New York, she's committed to providing 50 additional beds. What? That's that's your answer to a que- a very important question, by the way. Good job to the reporter who asked that question during that press conference, by the way. Great question about the resources and the need for beds. That's your answer though, 50 beds that Kathy Hochul said like, sure, yeah, yeah, no, I commit to that. We'll get around to that eventually, sure. I don't even know if the 50 beds will happen, but 50 beds, clearly not enough. Let's go to the last graphic here. This is the update. There are one more than 1,000 people on waiting lists for community-based programs catering to people with serious mental illnesses per data I obtained. Eric Adams, who issued a major mental health plan yesterday, told us he was unaware of the wait lists. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Okay, so guys, there's two different issues here in my opinion. One is the incompetence of politicians. And so if you're a young Turks viewer, you might not be surprised by that. If you're a sentient human being in America, you might not be surprised by that. But if you're an avid consumer of mainstream media, you will be surprised by that because You've been taught and brainwashed your whole life that these politicians are revered figures, amazing people, ones that we should honor, right, and, and take seriously. No, I've met tons and tons of politicians. They're not that bright, uh, and they have almost no ability to plan. They couldn't plan their way out of a wet paper bag. I say that sometimes about Trump, but really, there's others, including the Democratic Party, are not that much better. 
okay? So here comes a mayor of New York, the largest city in the country. You'd think he would ask simple questions like, how many beds do we have? If we're gonna commit people, how much space do we have? Exactly. What are the standards for committing people? I mean, like just a very, very, very basics before you go launch something. That's gonna affect a lot of people, right? No, no, they oftentimes they don't plan at all. They're like, I don't know, let's just do something. Uh, we need to do it for PR reasons. No, there's a crisis in the country right now, especially in cities like LA and New York. It, the federal government needs to be involved. It is a state of emergency, it is. The resources need to be allocated. You can't just say, we're gonna involuntarily commit people, which again is a serious thing. And as I mentioned and, and discussed in detail yesterday, I do think there is a place for that. Yeah. But you have to keep in mind that civil liberties matter. People's bodily autonomy matters. You have to be specific about what factors into the decision to involuntarily commit someone. What kind of resources are there? What kind of treatment are you gonna provide? But none, none of that, none of that exists, it's crazy. So what's gonna happen is if he actually does implement this in the haphazard way that you know we see it's happening right now. It's gonna lead to all sorts of horrific stories. And then it's just nothing's gonna happen to actually improve the mental health crisis that we're experiencing across the country. Cuz they're gonna look at what Eric Adams did and say, no, we can't do that because that fails, right? That's a failed method of dealing with this. Yeah, it's almost like he's setting it up to fail. So, all right, uh, guys, that leads to my second point, which is that um, the reason why we get attacked from all fronts, left wing, right wing, middle wing, whatever, is because we do something that no one else does, balance. Everybody else tells you that answer is always in the extremes, right? We should never involuntarily commit anyone, it's an offense against their civil liberties. We should involuntarily commit people that have broad range, just let the cops do their job, take everyone away. That's what the two camps almost always say. Yep. When the answer is obviously not at the extremes. It, what it is is sometimes folks uh, are in a situation where they're not making free choices. They, they've, they're in a bad spot and you're not helping them at all by saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, hashtag freedom, go live in the streets. If you're on the left and you think that's helping them, I don't think, <laughs> I, I think you have a very skewed interpretation of what help is, okay? Uh, on the other hand, the right wing, no, you can't just go lock up people because the cops thought they were mentally ill. The cops will think that looking at them wrong uh, is will make you mentally ill, right? I mean, they'll abuse the living crap out of that instantly. You have to have incredibly clear guidelines and it has to be balanced. So some people need help and we need to get them that help, even if they are, can't volunteer to that because of the condition they're in. When you have a massive mental health issue and you're on the streets, let alone when you combine it with drugs, you're not in your right mind. You're not voluntarily doing anything and so, we need to get those folks help, but we can't do it willy nilly. We can't do it in a way that tortures them and brutalizes them. 100%. So, and if you're an advocate on the left and say, hey, we need more mental health facilities so we don't over police and, and, and put everybody in prison when they don't belong there, great. Yeah. So, we, we, we've got to get a lot more funding for mental health, yep. okay? So, you gotta make sure that you close the loop. That if you are criticizing something, you've gotta have a constructive answer. And mental health is a constructive answer, and I think we all agree to that on yep. the left, yep. right? But you've also got to get people into those mental health facilities when they need it. And don't talk to me about nonsense freedom for people who are, for only the ones that are clearly not in their right mind. And, can't and I'm not the judge of that, by the way, professionals are. Mental health professionals. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.